Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool. I wanted to show you another little lighting trick for doing real estate for a kind of a tricky room. This is my house and uh, I've got definitely a problem room. I've seen this happen before. I've got kind of a small dining room. It probably looks big here because I'm using my 20 millimeter lens uh, from my filming camera on my DSLR there. But I've got a big problem in that I've got this beam up here. Now normally I could say, oh, you know, if the, if the ceiling was out here, I could easily bounce a light off. But I'm going to show you how I'd still do it with just one simple Yang Nuo cheapo flash, one little cheap, cheap speed light, to be able to light this room and make it look really good. So once again, problem being mostly is that I've got this beam up here, and that would block it. So if I were trying to set up a light stand in here, you know, I'd have to get on this side of that beam, maybe put two of them on both sides, I don't want to go to that much hassle for this small of a room, but it would be in the picture. So what I'm going to do is something very simple, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this with holding the, uh, the speed light. But first, I'm going to take an ambient shot. So let's take a look at all the settings. Now, once again, I'm using the same gear that I use most of the time. You've seen this probably on uh, some of my other videos. I'm not using a cam ranger. I'm just using a wireless trigger using some cactus. So what I'm going to do is first turn my flash off by just turning my cactus trigger off. I'm using ISO 320, I'm using uh, F6.3, uh, and I'm going to go down to about uh, one-tenth of a second. I'm going to go ahead and just get my focus point on that. I've already got this shot composed, and then I'm just going to go ahead and fire off an ambient shot first. And I like how that looks. It's not too bad. It might even be somewhat deliverable uh, just by the looks of that with maybe some touch-ups. But the color's off. One of the things we did when I painted this house was I got this kind of buckskin color that goes throughout. It's kind of a tricky color. Now, I, at a, on site, might do a gray card shot of this color on this particular wall. And I'd use that then as a reference that I would use for all the other shots with that. But one of the things that would really help is obviously using then a flash. If I were to HDR this, every single one of the auto white balances would have probably a little bit of blue cast and then a lot of yellow cast coming off this because there's also lights, uh, the, the, uh, the canned uh, ceiling lights in this uh, dining room. So I'd get all kinds of colors. That's why I like to use flash and use that flambient technique that I've shown in other videos. So now let's go ahead and do the flash shot. So I'm going to set up for that and in this case I'm going to use about 1 60th of a second. Once again ISO 320, F6.3 and I'm going to use the exact same focal point, but I'm going to turn on the flash now. This is good enough for me. It's winter time. This is December 1st, 2016, and there's not really much of a view out here. There is a, uh, a sequoia that's right outside this window, but it, and you can kind of see it a little bit. It's kind of green. It's nice. We won't have to blow the windows out. I'm not going to have to do a window pull if I'm shooting at about 1 60th of a second. It should be good enough. So instead of using the light stand in this shot, what I'm going to be doing is just taking this Yang Nuo off the light stand, and I just do it handheld um, by taking off what would normally be an umbrella holder, and that's what I use to mount my flashes because I've got cactus triggers and all that stacked on top of it. So that guy's ready to go. Yang Nuo at uh, one half uh, power, that should probably do it for us. And all that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few pops with this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get inside here and I'm going to do the wall crawl. So I'm going to get in close here, I'm going to get up against the wall as much as I can, and I'm going to bounce this off the ceiling in here by just firing off another shot. Boom. That's what that guy looks like. And I'm just going to walk over to the other side, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. If my uh, microphone cord here will reach long enough, I think it will, and here we go, and wall crawl, bam. Okay, got another one. Now, I probably have enough right there to use for everything that I'd need, but just to be on the safe side, it's only going to take me two more seconds. I'm going to actually just reach in here. I will be partially in the shot, but I'm going to bounce off the middle of this ceiling, which should then give me a better spread for any type of shadows and maybe light this table just a little bit better. So just real quick, boom and that's all done. So now I've got enough footage to go ahead and work with. At this point I'll just be putting my speed light away, but right now I'm going to take you upstairs. I'm going to take you to the processing portion of this. Take a look at my office. Actually how I would process this flambian shot using those various frames. You ready? Let's go. All right, we're ready to edit. 
So <laughs> my office looks a lot bigger than what it is because I left that 20 millimeter lens on my camera that I was filming with so you could see everything. Normally I wouldn't shoot this wide. Don't worry, we're gonna take a closer look at the screen and see exactly how this is gonna all be processed. Now, all that I've done here is I've taken the uh, files that we were using, those uh, images and also the video. Um, I've taken those off the cameras. I've put them on the hard drive. I've uh, imported them into Lightroom and now I'm gonna start the editing process. Nothing's been done yet, so bear with with me, I'm going to walk you through exactly what I would do with these images to process this picture. Ready? Let's go. So taking a look here, this is the ambient shot that we used and then we had three flash shots. Me doing the wall crawl, wall crawl two, and then me getting into the frame holding the uh, light. Now I could probably crop this one down and help out, but notice the difference here. Look at the color of the carpet here. That is the color of my carpet. I can guarantee you that. If you take a look at the ambient shot, you can see how there was a lot of magenta that came through that. Now I could maybe tone down that magenta. I could try to get the white balance correct. I could use a gray card on it, but why? I know that once again, the flash is gonna go ahead and correct my colors the way that I need to. I can get a really good picture this way. It doesn't take long doing this flambient technique. So let's go ahead and get started here. First thing I would do with this shot, I would start with the ambient shot, and I would just go ahead and apply one of my presets, which basically is just taking out the, uh, once again, you've seen me do this in other uh, videos, it's doing some basic lens corrections down here of enabling the profile corrections, removing chromatic aberration, and adjusting the verticals. I could check that further and I could go into the manual mode here and go, okay, what do my verticals look like? Does it look good enough? And I'm fairly satisfied. The one thing is, since this is a single point focus here, do my horizontals look good? And I think they're, they're fairly good, at least for this, but I could adjust this here by moving it maybe just a tad like that. You know, that might adjust it just a little bit more, but that's okay. I actually like the way that it was. So I just did a control Z to undo that. So I'm happy with that shot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, right click. I'm gonna say develop settings, copy settings, copy all those settings. And now I'm gonna select all of those pictures that I liked, right click, develop settings, and paste settings. And now all of those pictures are synced. They've got the exact same adjustments to them. Any other corrections I would have needed to do, they would have been done then. But that's all I needed to do. And the reason why I still selected the one that I copied from is because I'm gonna right click again, and I'm gonna go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now, this is gonna go ahead and bring up all of these into Photoshop. And as you might recall, I have an action that I use, um, and I'll show another video on how to do actions, where this will align all my layers. Now, I'm not using a cam ranger, and I did touch my camera when I turned the flash on compared to the ambient shots. So those could be somewhat out of align. So just to make sure that they're not misaligned, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I have it with the F2 key. So when I press the F2 key, it'll do the auto align real quick. There it goes, aligning the layers for me. And you can see it went off just a little bit. If we zoom in, you can see there's a, an edge here. And that's because, sure enough, I wasn't quite aligned. It's pretty close, but not quite. So let's go ahead and just did a view fit. Now, this is gonna be my ambient layer. <clears throat> Excuse me, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set its mode to luminosity. And that's good. You can see it, there's an outline of me in there. But don't worry about that right now. We're just gonna go ahead and say layer mask hide. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in all these various shots. So there's me standing one, there's me standing two, and then here's me with the other standing. So what I think I would do is I'll use this as my base shot. I kinda like that, but I gotta get my arm out of there. So I can get my arm out of there with this one here. So let me just put that right on top of here just for this tutorial, I wouldn't need to. But I'll just go ahead and go layer mask hide, escape. I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and escape, hit B for the brush tool. I'm setting my flow still at 8%. That's about everything I'd wanna use for a flambient technique, and I'll just keep it that way anyways. I'll probably up that just a little bit as far as the size, and I could do that with some keyboard shortcuts as well. I'm gonna start painting that in. Maybe, yeah, can I go ahead and adjust that up a little bit? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and boom, boom, boom. And now let's just start painting that in. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that arm. That's one of the first things I wanna do here. Okay, good. So he's pretty much gone, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get a little bit more of that color down in here so that it blends real good, 
and I'm pretty well satisfied. Now that's probably good to go for a flash shot, but in the case of this room, what I can also do is take, you know what, I want a little bit more from this guy here. So what I can do is, okay, layer mask hide, and then I could use him over here where I lit up this a lot better. And that's all that it is. So I'm just taking these up, didn't want to do that much. Got these shadows in here. I could go ahead and probably take those out. I'm going to fix those shadows and also some of the other lighting here with then using the ambient. Let's just see though if I've got anything here. Nope, there I come. Let me check the other one. This is of course me standing over there. And yeah, that got about the same amount of shadows. I'll just get rid of that. Now, I can check and see, does the table look better on any of these? If I right click on the mask on any of these and go disable layer mask, I can take a look at the table. What's the table look like? Eh, I like the table better from the, the base shot that I'm using. Disable layer mask here. Same thing, not really a big fan of it, so I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to disable the uh, layer mask on the ambient layer. And now this is kind of what it would look like if I had all the ambient light in there. Well, I'm not going to do all the ambient light. I'm just going to paint in some of it where I can make it look a little bit more natural. So I'm going to go back to my brush tool. And you can see it's a little bit flashy here, not so much there. So let's try a little bit ambient here. I'm just brushing it in. And I love using this tablet. If you notice, I'm using a Wacom tablet. And I'm getting a little bit of the natural chair shadows that are thrown in there. A little bit of the natural table. Let's throw that into the light coming in. That's going to make that really pop. So without that ambient, look at the table. See? Boom. So that already is looking good. I'm going to get rid of some of these shadows down here. And you can do this to your heart's content, whatever you decide to do. I just went to Eraser Tool. And by the way, that was just hitting E. And then that brought in the Eraser Tool. I hit B, and that switches back to Brush. Because so I'm using the Brush Tool. And I'm going to go in here and see, uh, is there something little in here? Because I missed quite a bit. Let's also try the ceiling. I'm going to zoom out just one little click and see what the ceiling looks like with the ambient. Yeah, kind of looks a little bit more natural that way. That doesn't look so bad. Now, there's probably a lot of flash over here, so let's try some ambient just right here along the edges. Yep, that took some of that out. That's good. And there should be a bit of a shadow coming off this art that's on the wall. So I'm going to bring in some ambient here and see, yeah, sure enough, see some of that shadow is starting to come back. And that's starting to look now like it was just natural light coming in there, but I've got the correct colors that are going on. So let's just say that that's good enough. I'm totally fine with it. So we'll go ahead and I'll select all those. I probably don't have to, but I'm going to go flatten image. I'm going to do control S for save. And once that's saved, it's back in Lightroom as that. Now, the only thing I have to do here, a uh, couple things. I have a, uh, it's borrowed from Rich Baum, B-A-U-M, check out his videos on YouTube. You will love the stuff he has to help with real estate. Um, I'm going to do what uh, I kind of borrowed from him, it's called the RE Full Bump. You've seen me do this also on the other Flambient ones. I hit that preset and boom, so we got a little bit more punch, but I'm going to do a few final adjustments here. First off, I need to go ahead and crop out some of that edge because I lost some of that when I was doing the alignment, so that's okay. I like that crop there, that's totally fine. I'm not going to do as much clarity in this, I'm going to bring back a little bit of the highlights so I've got some nice brightness in there. And that's looking pretty good. Now, if you remember what our ambient shot looked like, it looked like this. And you can see we had a lot of magenta, colors were off, the window was blown out. We could have done some HDR, but we would have been HDR in three different auto white balanced images. When we use the flash, then we're able to get more correct colors. So this is something I would be proud to go ahead and, and give to my client. So what I'm gonna do right now, that's fine. We could probably do some more adjustments, no need to right now, but I'm gonna just go File, Export, and I'm gonna export that as, put it in a subfolder called Exported, and I'm gonna just give it my own custom name. I usually start with 01, giving two digits, that way I'm not gonna get up to 99 pictures, but they all fall in sequence. Another little trick that I do to help me sort those pictures, you don't have to, and I'm gonna just say then Export, and as soon as that exports, then bam, there's our final product, all completely processed. So that was it. It was kind of a, a tricky room to do because of that beam in there. And there's a lot of ways you could do it. When I'm in a hurry, uh, you know, on site, I try to get as much footage as I can. If it's only going to take me an extra two seconds for another flash pop, just go pop, pop, pop. Get those as much as you can. Take those back and you can then see, I probably didn't need all three of those. I could have probably done it even with just the two, one to 
get my arm out of there and one for getting the uh, the, the shot kind of bounced. So uh, with that and then the ambient I've got a nice uh, flambient going on but using just one Yang Nuo speed light and of course now the light wasn't really coming in that window too hard didn't have to do a window pull but that might have been the other option. So if I had a lot of natural light coming in through that window I might have done a window pull on it or maybe let it be a little bit blown out since the view wasn't super spectacular there was a nice tree out there but yeah it's not really selling the house. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was very helpful to you. If you'd like to see more like this, you can subscribe to this channel. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, take care. Get out there and shoot something.